Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's focus for Wednesday, June the 28th, 2023, at 12.23 p.m. Central Time. Today's focus, women and parachurch ministries. Today's focus is women and parachurch ministries. Specifically, here's what I want you to think about today. Using your Bible, I want you to find every verse you could find that would seem to indicate that a woman cannot lead a parachurch ministry. All right, I want you to find every Bible verse you can come up with that would seem to prohibit a woman from leading, being in charge of a parachurch ministry. Ministry. Now, if we look up parachurch, let's start right here. I didn't even think about this, but because some of you may not be familiar with the term parachurch, but if you look up parachurch, parachurch meaning, all right, parachurch organizations, parachurch organizations are Christian faith based organizations that work outside and across denominations. All right. So in other words, a parachurch, it's not a part of a local church. It's outside. It's not controlled by a local church. It's not controlled by a denomination. It's outside of that structure. So a parachurch ministry is not a church. It's not part of a church. It's not controlled by a church. It's not a part of a denomination. It's not controlled by a denomination. It is outside of that structure. Now, with that in mind, using your Bible, If you were to say, nope, a woman cannot lead a parachurch ministry, what scripture would you use? Now, a go-to scripture to tell what women can and cannot do in the church is typically, it's a go-to one, is 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer, I, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, I remember being in Germany, standing outside what we call the, the, the chow hall, standing outside the, the dining facility in the United States military. I was on, on, on a military base in Germany. And I'm standing outside waiting to go in. All I want to do is get food. And this person there is having a conversation and complaining and discussing the fact that on that military installation, the chaplain for that military installation was a woman. And so he was having this like, well, I I get tired of people saying a woman can't be a chaplain. How dare they say that? If God called her into ministry, she can be in whatever ministry she wants to. And then others were saying, no, no, no. The Bible says a woman, I I suffer a woman not to teach or usurp authority. And then someone was like, well, so, but wait a minute, we have women commanders. And others were like, well, we shouldn't have women commanders because they're not to usurp authority over a man. And there shouldn't be a woman president. There shouldn't be a woman governor. And there shouldn't be a woman senator. And there. And women shouldn't even be in the military and they should be at home cooking. And it's like, and then I'm just sitting there going, I don't look, I just want to go in and get some food. That's all I care about. I don't care to have a theological war standing in front of the chow hall. I just want to go in and eat. Okay. So, but that was the fight and I'll never forget the fight and everybody, and everybody was quoting scripture and everyone was like, you know, a woman can't do this. A woman can't do this. A woman can't do this. Of course they were all men. Uh, The women weren't anyone around to talk about it, but all the men were making their case for what a woman can or cannot do based off scripture. And everyone was using scripture. One was using scripture to say, no, a woman can be a chaplain. Another one was using scripture saying a woman can preach. And another was using scripture saying a woman can't preach. Another another was using scripture saying a woman can't be president. And and then it was on. And a woman shouldn't be a commander. And I I, I, I shouldn't have to ever have to answer to a woman commander or a woman at a, a higher rank than me in the military. And it was just, I was just sitting there going, oh man. 
in the wonderful world of Christianity. Everyone using the Bible. Everyone saying the Bible's authoritative and nobody can come to any agreement on what it actually says. Oh, that, 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 that always drives me crazy. So for you today... Oh, I want you to just really think about this parachurch. Now, I'm really stressing the parachurch because when you read a passage like 1 Timothy chapter 2 that says, I let a woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer a woman, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. What, what is this referencing? Is this referencing the rules inside the church or is it referencing the rules inside the home? I've seen some say this only references how it should work in the home. See, inside the home, the woman should be silent and she should listen to her husband who has the place of spiritual leadership and he should be the one teaching her. She shouldn't be teaching him. Well, the only problem I have with that is I've seen countless times where the man couldn't teach the woman anything because the woman knows more Bible, more theology, more church history, and the man is nowhere close. She's like at university level and he's over there and like, third grade. And I'm not saying that in an insulting way. It's just like, now you can say, well, the man needs to step up. Well, he may need to, but then how does that work? And does, and does this getting too excited and can't breathe, does does this apply to the home? If it applies to the home, then what do you do with verse nine? And like manner, also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with boided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Now, what some say, well, don't take that too literally. It just means the woman shouldn't be so focused on her external appearance. She should be more focused on her internal godliness. So it's not actually a prohibition against those things. It's just a prohibition against making that the focus. Okay, well, if we're going to kind of modify that one, then do we then modify, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection? Well, some say, well, that means a woman should never ask a question in church. Her husband should ask the question. A woman should never speak out. But in my church, I'm always wanting people to speak out. So I, I, I think it's acceptable. Like, how do you view that? And if it's in the home, the woman is to just never speak until, the, I mean, like, and the woman is to be careful what she's wearing in the house, not like... How do you how do you apply this if it's to the house and how does this apply if it's in the church? And then we have the famous verse, but I suffer a woman not to teach nor serve authority over a man. Is that the church or is that the home? I've heard people try to apply this to the home. Have people apply this to the church? I have some people try to apply this to all of society. That a woman should never be in a position of leadership anywhere, nowhere, not in the home, not in the workplace, not in the military, not in government. The woman should never. And I've had people go that direction with it. So is this a reference to how women should conduct themselves in the home? Is this a reference to how women should conduct themselves in the church? Or is this a reference to how women should conduct, conduct themselves in society at large? Inquiring minds want to know. So would where, would you use this verse to say a woman can't be in charge of a parachurch organization? Now, historically, I've tried to limit this this scripture to the church as much as possible, and not and and not anywhere else. I mean, clearly, I don't believe it applies to society because then that would impose trying to create, you know, using the Bible to govern society, which then you get into all kinds of issues there, Christian nationalism. We can go to that whole argument. I, I think it implies somewhat to the church that a woman should not be the pastor in a church. But a parachurch organization, is it is it bound by those same rules? You said, but it's a ministry. Yeah, but it's not a church. How do you understand these verses. Now, the reason we're talking about this today, you've probably already seen it. It's all over the place. John Piper says women shouldn't lead parachurch organizations. John Piper has spoken and we all listen. Now, I, I do find it interesting that it's it's not, you rarely get an article on many of these Christian websites. Hey, Pastor Bob from, you know, Sacramento said this. No, it's always, you got to reach a certain level of prominence, a certain level of celebrity and fame. And then when you speak, then the Christian world is supposed to listen. So sometimes it feels like, you know, our, our, our the Protestant version of having a Pope. Pope MacArthur says, Pope Piper says, but okay. 
I, you know, they, they, they have risen to some level of prominence for their ministries. Okay, wonderful. Why, why does John Piper believe a woman shouldn't lead a parachurch organization? What do you think his answer is going to be? Well, let's listen. It's at the, this is found at the ChristianPost.com. You can look it up yourself. Here we go. Notable theologian, author, and Bible teacher, John Piper, argued this week that women should not hold spiritually authoritative positions and parachurch organizations, believing that this runs afoul of God-ordained differences between men and women. And an episode of the Ask the Pastor John podcast posted on Desiring God's website on Monday, a listener sent a message asking about female leadership in a parachurch ministry. I work for a global parachurch organization, which is well known. Recently, our leadership decided that all positions of leadership within the organization will be open to women. This includes campus leadership, regional leadership, and national leadership, the listener inquired. Now, we should stop here before we talk about women in these positions. Maybe we should ask this question. This is important. Are parachurch ministries biblical? Before we decide who's running them, should you have a parachurch ministry? Should all ministries be under the control of a church, of, a, of some kind of church structure, either a local independent church or a denominational structure? Should it? Should a podcast? Should a Christian podcast? My podcast currently obviously falls under Victory Baptist Church in Ovalo, Texas. It's a part of that, right? It's a part of that. Now, at some point, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know what my, how, you know, I don't know what the future of the church is and I don't know where things will go. But at some point, let's say the church was to come to an end and I move on and I'm no longer wanting to be a pastor. Does my podcast have to be under the control of a church? Now, would you call a podcast a parachurch ministry? I don't know. I don't know if I would call it a parachurch ministry, right? Right. Well, I mean, I would just be a podcaster. I'd just be a, a person sitting in front of a microphone talking about doctrine and theology. Or, I mean, would I have to re- re- kind of s- redefine what the po- podcast is? But what do, what do you believe? Do you believe parachurch ministries, it's perfectly biblical and okay for them to exist outside the control of a local church? Now, you could argue does the Bible really say? Now, you could argue that the Bible put forth the structure as the church. The church is the structure that would be, it's kind of just there in the New Testament. The letters are written to churches. It's churches, 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 churches. Church is the dominant institution in the New Testament. There's no way to get around that. So then should a parachurch ministry even exist? That, that, that's almost another today's focus episode right there. Today, I want you to just to determine biblically, should a woman be in charge of a parachurch ministry? But let, let's see what they have to say here. Okay. Previously, these positions of spiritual authority, and this is, I think, still from the listener uh, asking about this parachurch organization, and now that they've opened it up to women in, in all areas of leadership. Previously, these positions of spiritual authority over men were reserved for men alone. The reason given for this change is that a parachurch organization is not the church. Therefore, the commands addressed to the churches about the role of men and women in relationship to one another do not apply in this case. How do you see it? So now this comes down to these passages. When they, these rules about women, where do they apply? The home, the church, or society? Those are your three options. You can say all three. You can say two out of three, one out of three. Where do you think they apply? Hey, 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 women, women, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. Now, you got to take everything into account in Scripture, wherever you see women involved in anything. Do they always follow these rules? And you can say, well, they weren't, they weren't really necessarily following these rules, but it wasn't inside a church. I mean, for example... My, the, I've talked about it before. Who discipled me first and foremost? 
It wasn't my pastor. It wasn't even inside the local church. I rode my bicycle to a older woman's house, right? She sat in a rocking chair. I sat on the floor. She opened her Bible. She discipled me. She taught me. Now, I was a teenager, right? So does that, does that mean like, well, but you're not really a man, but what, what, when, when are you considered a man? When, when are you considered a man that a woman is not to have the authority over you in teaching? When, when is it? When is it? Now you say, well, because again, and the public school system, a teenage boy, a lot of your teachers, most of my teachers were women. Even, even in college, a lot of my professors were, uh, and, and well, it depends on which kind of college. When I was in seminary, Bible college, it was men, but in other places, it was women, other universities when I was going to school for different things, women. So, well, then was it wrong for a woman to teach? See, if you, if, if you apply it to society, you're in a mess. If you only apply it to the church, well, in that case, where it wasn't a parachurch organization because it was just in her living room, Right. So, but she's the one who discipled me. She was the one who taught me first and foremost. So would that have applied there? Well, let's say I was 20. Let's say I was 20. And she's an you know, elderly woman, but she knew far more than, I, I hate to say that, I felt she knew more theology, more doctrine than the pastor did. And she was willing. Would it have been wrong? For her to teach, teach me. Now we weren't inside the church. She's not a parachurch organization. So you see how to take these scriptures. You have to, where do they apply? Church, home, society. Now their argument is, hey, we're not a church. So it really comes down to how you interpret these passages. Piper said, now this is what Piper said. uh, He felt that it was, and I quote, sad to hear of the ministry's decision and considered to move to be an example of rejecting God-ordained differences between men and women because of cultural, societal pressures. All right? So uh, they they are, according to Piper, he thinks it's a sad that they're... Now, I don't know how he can understand why the ministry did it. He said that they're because of cultural and societal pressures... You know, hey, just because someone changes their view doesn't always mean it's because of cultural and societal pressures. It may be. Now, if the organization came out and said, we're making this change because of cultural and societal, uh, you know, pressures, I think you just got to be very careful when you uh, you make those kinds of uh, accusations. Uh, now, they go on to say the culture, he's, I'm quoting from Piper, the culture as a whole is in a free fall of denial. Nobody in this free fall has on a parachute. It's all going to end tragically. The evidences of which are all around us, said Piper, the chancellor of Bethlehem Bethlehem College and Seminary in Minneapolis, Minnesota. All right. Now, wait, someone just said. And at what point then would conversation become teaching them? Like me discussing theology with a nephew, for example, when he's grown, like the, the confusion of when it would become teaching. Oh, well, definitely would raise some questions, right? Like to me, teaching would be you are the teacher, you are in the church, you're standing behind the pulpit, the podium, you're the one standing in front of the class, you're the one leading, you're the one teaching. Now, if we leave it to the church, then it's, okay, we can understand how to work that. But but if it's a parachurch ministry, then do we apply it to the parachurch ministry? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know if you can. So he goes on, a person who stands up and draws attention to God's word or the teaching of nature and questions the wisdom of undifferentiated sex roles will not only be thought a fool, but also unjust and very likely soft on abuse, even though all the while the sex leveling uh, egalitarian impulses wreak havoc at every level of our culture. Wow, that's a mouthful. All right. I, I, I mean, that's a lot of accusations. Let me read that whole paragraph again. A person who stands up and draws attention to God's word or the teaching of nature and questions the wisdom of undifferentiated sex roles will not only be thought a fool, but also unjust and very likely soft on abuse, even though all the while the sex leveling egalitarian impulses wreak havoc on every level of our culture. I don't know what he means by soft on abuse. Hasn't it been male-dominated denominations and male-dominated churches that have covered up abuse? Like, I, I, I don't know where that comes in to 
play. Piper referenced 1 Timothy 2, 12 through 14, which reads, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. Uh, she must be quiet for Adam was formed first and Eve and Eve and Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. Paul saw in the Genesis account of God's word that uh, that built into creation from the beginning before the fall was a peculiar responsibility of men to bear the burden of leadership and care, Piper continued. So the fact that Paul gave instructions. Yeah, I know. Someone, yeah, someone has just said the soft on abuse didn't make any sense. Yeah, the whole thing doesn't make any sense. Now, to be fair, the Christian post is taking quotes out of context to what Piper said on that uh, answer. What's it called? Uh, Ask Pastor John podcast. So we'll need to find the episode in question and then we can review the entire audio. But uh, so let's just make sure we're, we're fair there. That comment didn't make any sense. He says, so in fact that Paul gave instructions for how the original design relates to the church and no way implies that it is limited to the church or the home. That was one application of many. So is Piper saying that these instructions go beyond the church and the home to society at large? Wow, that would, I'm not a fan of that. He says, in the parachurch uh, or a context, Piper believes Paul would say, I have taught, I have taught, Moses has taught, nature teaches that it goes against men and when it goes against man's and woman's trust, truest God-given nature to place a woman in a role of regular, direct personal leadership over man. So he seems to be implying that I guess in any context, Moses taught, Nature teaches, Paul taught that it goes against man's and women's truest God-given nature to place a woman in a role of regular, direct, personal leadership over men. Piper's remarks come after the Southern Baptist Convention garnered national attention for removing churches from membership that allowed women to hold the office of pastor. All right. Um, They go on to say, while some theologically conservative denominations like the SBC prohibit female pastors, others like the Assemblies of God allow for women to serve as the pastor. And a 2010 position paper titled The Role of Women in Ministry, the Assemblies of God argued that 1 Timothy passage Piper cited only applied specifically to the church Paul was writing to. So there's another way to interpret it. 1 Timothy 2, it only applied to the church Paul. Paul was writing to. That's it. Number two, it applies to the church in general. Number three, it only applies to the home. And number four, it applies to all of society. Hey, don't you love how simple and easy Bible interpretation is? (laughs) All right. Um, A a reading of the entire passage of 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 15, strongly suggests that Paul was giving Timothy advice about dealing with some heretical teachings and practices specifically involving women in the church at Ephesus, stated the Assemblies of God paper. So Assemblies of God, 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 15, only deals with that church, period. The heresy may have been so serious that he had to say, about the uh, about the Ephesian women, I am not allowing women to teach or have authority over a man. Other passages show that such exclusion was not normative in Paul's ministry. There you have it. What do you want to do with that? I don't know. I don't know what you want to do with that. I, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think we have some serious questions here. I I put it this way. If we, I'll just ask it this way. If we limit it to the church, I don't know how you can expand it beyond the church. I just don't know how we can take Paul's words to Timothy and expand them beyond the church. If we expand them beyond the church, then you're basically calling for Christians to try to take over every area of leadership in society and fire all the women. Okay. That is insane. That is crazy. And that is a form of Christian nationalism. I reject applying this to society in any way, shape or form. What? So I, I say the church in the home, uh, trying to apply it to the home. I don't know exactly. I, I don't know how that would work. I, I don't, I don't, I, I would have issues trying to make that fit 
the home as well. I would have problems trying to make that fit the home. I, I would, I'm, you know, I, I would willing, I would be willing to hear people's arguments about that. I did listen to a Christian apologist try to argue that this only applies to the home, but that just takes like, why would Paul be telling Timothy, Hey, here are the rules for the home. I, I think he's telling, here's the rules for the church. I think it's more for the church. That that's at least my, that my thinking it's for the church. Um, so I don't think it works for society. I think, I think trying to apply it to the home, I think it breaks down. I think it's for the church. And if it's for the church and a parachurch ministry is not then under the control or the authority of said church or a denomination, then are they bound by these rules? It would be like, I mean, this is something to really consider. Can a Christian woman be a podcaster? Can a Christian woman have a podcast? Can she have a Christian podcast where she teaches the Bible and talks about the Bible and theology? Or would it be wrong? Would it be wrong? Now you say, well, if the podcast is under the church, then it would be governed by church rules and therefore she could not sit in front of a microphone because she would be teaching and having authority over a man. But does a podcaster have any authority? Right? Does does a podcaster have authority over men? Do I have authority over you? I have no authority. I have zero authority as a podcaster, right? So that, do, would that apply? I don't think that would apply. And in and a, ch- and, and a church setting, doesn't the teacher have some authority over the class, especially a pastor? Now, you could argue, does a pastor even really have any authority even in the church? I mean, you, we, we, we could have a long discussion about that. So today's focus is I just want you to, I want you to just gather scripture. Find the scriptures that prohibit, here's what I would do. Find the scriptures that seem to prohibit women's ability to do things in the church. Find all of those scriptures. Find the scriptures where women seem to be involved in doing things. Right? Women seem to be involved in doing things. And then just try to ask yourself, okay, these scriptures that pro that seems to have a prohibition against women, where, where do we limit... Where is the prohibition directed at? Is it directed women in the church or is it directed to women in society? Is it directed to women in the home? And if a parachurch organization is not part of a church, can you then apply church rules to a parachurch organization? And if you're going to go with parachurch, how about women doing podcast? I don't think I've seen too much controversy about that. I'd love to get your thoughts. News, if at yahoo.com. News, if at yahoo.com. That's news, if at yahoo.com. I'm going to stop right there. I feel like I should say more, but today's focus is just to give you something to focus on. So now you've got something to talk about, something to discuss. Gather around the dinner table today and have a discussion about, really, it's a hermeneutical issue to me. How do you interpret the passages in the Bible that seem to place a prohibition against women and positions of leadership? Do you interpret them to be only for the church alone, for the church and the home, for the home only and not the church? Do do they apply to society? Do they only apply to that specific church in which you find the prohibition to? And if the prohibition, and, and now think about this, if 1 Timothy 2 if those instructions are only for that church, then isn't the qualifications for a pastor in 1 Timothy chapter 3 only for that church? You can't go from 2, 11 through 15 and say that's only for that church. And then the very next chapter say that's for all pastors at all times and all places. I would argue then the qualifications for a pastor in 1 Timothy 3 are only for that specific church. And we have no general list of qualifications for a pastor anywhere. And see, 1 Timothy 3, clearly that's, 1 Timothy 3 is clearly not about the home. So why would 1 Timothy 2 be about the home? 1 Timothy 3 is about obviously the church. If you say those qualifications for a pastor, like this becomes a hermeneutical mess 
This is more to me, not about women. This is about how we interpret the Bible and what's the correct way to handle it. All right, there we go. It's on the Christian, it's at the christianpost.com today. You'll see it. It's probably all over the place. People will probably be arguing about it today. Women in parachurch organizations, can they be leaders or not according to scripture? You search the scriptures, tell me what you find. And that is your today's focus for Wednesday, June the 28th, 2023.